Greetings, salutations. Fujifilm GFX 100, technically 102 megapixel sensory camera. Unlike the rest of these knuckle dragging charlatans on YouTube, I actually buy the gear that I review, not rent it or test drive it for 24 hours, but actually buy it. Have both current GFX cameras, the 50S and the 50R. I'm not interested in reading off a specification sheet because any idiot obviously can go to Fujifilm and read that. As an owner of both current GFX cameras, I'm interested in the detailed specifics of this camera that are not being mentioned absolutely anywhere. The, uh, the nuances, as they say, the devils and the details. Now, to answer the question that everybody keeps asking me over and over and over again, they say, are you going to get the GFX 100? And the answer to that question is, let me think about it for a second, Absolutely. fucking lootly um, Five frames per second on the GFX 100. That's quite amazing. Um, interestingly enough, and nobody's mentioned most of these points, is that the shutter mech, exactly like that on the X-H1, the actual mechanism, not the IBIS, but the shutter mech is at a five-point spring suspension. You notice the stealthy shutter that's on the X-H1 if you happen to have that camera? Well, that will be present. It'll still be louder because it's medium format. That is present on um, the uh, GFX100. You can use the exact same tilt adapter that uh, you use with the 50S that will also be usable on the GFX100. Also, too, identical to that of the X-H1 camera on the shutter release, there is a leaf spring on the shutter release. If you've test-driven the X-H1, you've noticed that, that the uh, shutter will trip uh, almost without you knowing it. Um, they've incorporated that leaf spring shutter release, like on the X-T3 or X-T30, for example, all kind of the same. You, you'll notice right before the shutter release breaks over to actually release. But, so that's good news. It also, not only does that drastically, as I mentioned in the X-H1 review, reduce uh, camera shake, uh, that leaves, it's actually a brilliant idea. Nobody's mentioning that fact. There's a brilliant idea that Fujifilm uh, incorporated that into the GFX100. Um, I knew it was phase detect uh, autofocus on the GFX100. It is the uh, IMX461 sensor. It's backside illuminated sensor, but it is actually true corner to corner phase detect autofocus. I thought it was like 70 or 80 percent of the medium format sensor. No, it's true corner to corner phase detect. That is absolutely unbelievable. Um, people are talking about the uh, digital dials. Well, there are no actual physical dials on the right side of the camera. It's a large top display. The uh, reasoning for that, the Fujifilm did that, number one, extremely sleek design, but that also drastically improves the uh, weather sealing uh, of the camera. Infiltration of bad weather through the dials has always been an issue with any camera made by anybody. Um, two batteries and the tray. Basically, the integrated monoblock design is like that of a Nikon D5, a Nikon D4, uh, with an integrated vertical grip. You can slap in one battery if you want, but it has a slot for two batteries. If you don't own a GFX, and I own both um, current ones, uh, the battery uh, usage on either current GFX is absolutely amazing. I assume this will be no different. An amazing 5.7 million dot uh, display, that's quite substantial. Depending on the lens, it'll be 5.5 stops of stabilization. That true corner phase detect, corner to corner phase detects is absolutely amazing. Interestingly also, the IBIS mechanism itself is not directly attached to the camera magnesium chassis, such that uh, inducement of shake, not only is there IBIS mech, the type of ingenious suspension that they did means that the frame impingement will not directly translate to the IBIS mech. So you not only have the IBIS mech, but you have a, a free suspension on the IBIS mech with sensor. Of course, the sensor is attached to the IBIS mech, so that's uh, kind of uh, brilliant. You have uh, four displays in total, obviously the top display, the EVF, and the LCD, but absolutely identical, and Fujifilm definitely took this from Nikon. Uh, like the D5 and D4 series, the flagship, they has a sub-display right underneath uh, the LCD display. All current uh, GFX uh, lenses, which are, there are eight current. Um, I own all eight of them. The 50mm uh, F3.5, which is the pancake lens, 
uh, is going to come out, I've been told by the Fuji rep, in early fall. Okay, so it's going to be out, so well, that's about four months from now. Um, the next lens after that is the uh, 40 to 100 millimeter zoom lens sometime in 2020, not this year. Later this year, Fujifilm is announcing sometime in July, I'm assuming, the uh, introduction of the X-Pro3. And I assume they're going to drop it for October, November for purchase for the holidays. Everybody is going to jump on that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to jump on the X, uh, GFX100. I'm going to be on that camera like stink on shit. <laughs> Maybe that's a bad analogy. Uh, I definitely don't stink and this camera is definitely not shit. Um, I'm going to be on it like a like a pervert in a porn shop. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's an even worse analogy. Mm, let me think about it. Mm, um, I don't know. I think you know where I'm going with that. Um, yeah, the interesting stuff nobody mentioned about this camera. It's the, uh, shutter mech suspension, like the X-H1, that's brilliant. Leaf spring shutter release, like the X-H1, that's also brilliant. Thank God it's the same tilt adapter for the current GFX 50S will also be usable on this one. Um, yep, 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 yep. Um, by the way, yeah, this people say you need to upgrade your computer. I've actually got a lot of comments. And this is just the what I have in here now. I, I hardly use this for anything anymore. People say you need to upgrade your computer now that you're getting. Well, I upgraded my computer in uh, December, about you know five months ago. And it's a nice 27-inch iMac, 5K display, with a bazillion gig of RAM, and a nice huge solid-state drive. So I got no problems right there. Um, <laughs> there will be people that will probably download the raw files once the full raw files are available. And uh, they'll be complaining. And it's like, what are you looking at this on? It's like, I'm looking at it on my 2001 compact computer. <laughs> so, yeah, OK. <laughs> I'd be like a blind person looking at a Picasso. I say, ah, I mean, I'm mostly blind. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you need to, need to, if you're going to buy the camera that produces the output, it might be a wise idea to buy a display that actually drops the output to your eyeballs. Not only is that a really good idea, it also drastically helps in editing the shots. People say, why the hell are you buying this camera? Um, contrary to what people think, or, and I don't give a damn really what people think, I've done two product shoots this month alone. Yeah, one of them's for a local retail store. Another one is a really cool shot I keep vacillating on showing people, but it's kind of a controversial product shot, but I really loved what I did on it. I used the GFX um, 50S for that shot. Um, believe it or not, I actually make money with my GFX cameras. Not much money. I basically have three jobs, but uh, two jobs this month is is two jobs more than almost everybody else with a GFX camera. So people say, why do you need a dinner? And it is true. We have to be honest with ourselves here. This is good news for anybody looking for to buy the current two GFX. They're obviously the price, not on any camera, has ever dropped when a new camera came out. It was always like nine months later. Then the price dropped. Current GFX 50R is uh, $500 off anyway at $4,000, but it's not going to drop that drastically. This sensor uh, assembly itself is $2,000 in the two current GFX cameras. But I mean, it's good news for somebody like eight or nine months down the road where there'll be people, a few people dropping their GFX current cameras for the new GFX 100. And they're gonna, there's going to be more than a few people that have been wanting to get a GFX camera that are going to get one for a song, you know, which that's American speak for a great price. So, yeah, so far as me getting the GFX 100, I wish people stop asking, man. I mean, the answer is absolutely. Was that too over the top? I don't think it was too over the top. Um, I love the digital dials. That actually makes it a much sleeker design. I really love the five-point spring suspension on the on the X-H1 that's also incorporated into this and the least spring shutter release. That's actually quite important. Nobody's talking about that. Everybody that's reviewed it so far is nobody that actually owns the camera. Of course, I know it's not available for sale yet, but uh, it's the same people that have always... And by the way, I think 
you know, of all the people. And this is, this is kind of amazing. They, uh, Fujifilm invited Dumb and Dumber, possibly a couple people from Diaper Review, all the way to, these people are famous for always taking a shit on the GFX cameras. Their GFX uh, 50R review was beyond abysmal. It's like, you know, someone at Fuji, now this is where I'm critical of Fujifilm, okay? Forget about me, right? Someone at Fujifilm is like, you know those guys are always taking a crap on our cameras and our wonderful medium format. Let's say we invite them to Japan to have a field day with the camera so they can make another attack video on our wonderful, awesome, one-of-a-kind, unique cameras. That, yeah, I saw that video. You know, is making absurd statements. It's like, yeah. So Fujifilm, you you invited the same people that are always attacking your cameras. You invited them and flew them to Japan, and then you 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 let them have at the GFX. <laughs> okay, yeah. somebody somebody in marketing keeps making the same mistake. You know, here's here's a here's a point to Fujifilm. You know. If you're going to invite somebody, forget about me, right? Hey, Fujifilm. If you're going to invite somebody to review a medium format camera, that should be somebody that has a few uh, tree rings on them, you know, a few years. People that grew up with medium format. Not these people that grew up with little dinky ass, you know, small, you know, this is a, this is a great camera, the XG30. They grew up with tiny cameras, and they just don't get it. It's like someone has driven little midget cars their entire life, and you want them to review the giant bulldozer. And they just have all these insane ideas. Like, I don't know why this thing's so big. It's a medium format. Shut the hell up. You keep inviting these people that have no clue what the hell medium format is. Every time they review a GFX camera, you know, they say these stupid, inane things. That's why, that's why I call them dumb and dumber. You know, I question the Fujifilm, the marketing guys, you know, invite somebody that actually grew up with medium format. Not me, you know, because I'm a pariah, right? Invite somebody that actually knows what medium format is, what it's for. Invite them, you know, fly them to Japan to review the camera. Not a couple of button-sniffing, uh, 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 button-sniffing uh, uh, gadget sluts. I don't know why this camera is so big. <laughs> oh god, okay. I have no idea at Fujifilm, the marketing, and it's not Fujifilm USA, it's somebody in Japan, so it was like, let's take these guys. And the reason is, is because their channel, their YouTube channel is actually smaller than mine. But the exposure that they have, because they're owned by Amazon and they sell cameras, you know, is a lot larger. Invariably, however, every time they review a Fujifilm GFX camera, they always trash talk it. It's okay to trash talk something that's valid, you know, is empirical and objective. It's like, look, I hate this thing right here. Nobody really likes this. It's okay, you know, if you want to tax it. But if you have these insane subjective ideas, you know, and you, you have no idea what medium format is, nobody really wants to hear, nobody with a brain anyway wants to hear what they have to say about that topic because they have no idea what medium format is. They're, they're clueless. So... Yeah, that was my short little rant. Anyway, wait for it. And by the way, anybody that thinks that I'm... Here's a perfect example. If anybody thinks that I'm like... Because I do all these videos on Fujifilm, and I wrote a book on Fujifilm. It's free, by the way. Download link is below. If anybody thinks that I have like any connection to Fujifilm, you know, if you want a perfect example of why I'm not, other than my personality, which is the obvious thing, you know... I never got a, an opportunity to test drive the camera for 24 or 48 hours, so mm, yeah. You want a perfect example? There's a perfect example. And of course, of all the top 10 channels on YouTube, okay, I'm the only one that buys these cameras. And I've posted up receipts, by the way, saying, you know, listen, let's be honest here for God's sakes. I actually buy this stuff. Okay, and I'm definitely not made out of money. I actually pay my good money for these cameras. The GFX 50S, the 50R, and the lenses. I pay for them. Anytime people have actually questioned me on that, I'm like, shut the hell up. Here, I just uploaded the receipt. Now shut your pie hole. Done. There it is. Mic drop. I actually buy these. You know? None of these other people are buying them.
you know? None of them. Well, but they'll, they'll give you an affiliate link and tell you why you should buy it. Oh, it's a great camera. You know, I didn't buy it myself. I borrowed it for a week, but, you know, you should buy it. Click the link below. I'll point out to you that I actually, yeah, I'm repeating myself. I'll point out to you that I actually paid for it. The guy that doesn't have that much money, you know, because I've never had a real vacation, by the way. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I think that says a lot. At least if you're smart, you realize that actually says something. Maybe I should take the guy advice of the guy that doesn't have much money but actually spends his money on it instead of the shills and affiliate link click weasels, you know, that borrow something for 24 or 48 hours or a week and then returns it. You should buy this. I'm renting it for a week, but you should buy it. I won't buy it. I got lots of money. Not meaning me. I got lots of money, but I'm not going to buy it, but you should buy it. Click the link below. <laughs> yeah. Mic drop.